Hey, and welcome to Painting Happy Little Minis. And it's the late night, the late, late? Late, late, late show. The late, late show. That's <laughs> officially what Dave has dubbed it. Let's go ahead. And so that's officially what it is it now. It is indeed. Woohoo! Yeah, it's the late, late show with Gretchen <laughs> and Dave. It, you have to say it with the jingle, otherwise. It's okay. Just, yeah. Otherwise, it doesn't work. It doesn't, no. <laughs> um, but Excellent. yeah, so Very we cool. are painting up. And what? Leona. And Leona. Let's not forget Leona. <laughs> Leona's just turned on the I, microphone. Yeah, just ding. <laughs> I imagine if we ever get a new intro, it should just be like a parody of the late show. The late late show. It should totally be a parody. And it'll just will pop up, and then it'll just be Leona's face, just going to go. And Leona. And Leona. <laughs> That'd be special cool. guest, and it's just always Leona. I'm yeah. just hovering in the background. <laughs> yes. <laughs> At like 20% opacity. <laughs> That'd be fantastic. Uh, but Perfect. yeah. Let's do that. <laughs> nice. I like it. Perks of perks of the Late Late Show. It's it's all good that we're doing the planning on the show. <laughs> it it it's helps we, keep it's everyone we... involved. It's and true. it lets you know that we value your opinion. Indeed. <laughs> yes. Excellent. Some key says, uh, live! And hello, all. Roger says, hi, Gretchen, Dave, and Leona. I did not forget you, Leona. <laughs> Roger, you never forget Leona. You're fantastic. We appreciate that. <laughs> so he says it was going to be James Corden. That must be me, wouldn't <laughs> Yes. I'm Dave. tubby and have a strange accent. <laughs> Are those the only qualifications? <laughs> I can't sing anywhere near as well as James Corden. Oh. <laughs> I know. It's kind of shameful. Maybe, and actually, fun fact, Dave was in the movie Cats. <laughs> <laughs> Just like James Corden. <laughs> good, good, good. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, Dave is a cat. not in the I'm movie Cats. Well, what would be your I cat got, name, um, Dave? I got yeah. We'll name the we'll name a cat named Dave. That's a good idea. Like okay. There we I go. did get Facebook working, everyone. So woohoo on that! <laughs> Fantastic! Hooray! <laughs> we can also say hi to uh, David Moffat. We can say hi to uh, Walter. And uh, oh, Jamie. Cool. Jamie says, "Hey, good evening. What's being painted?" Ooh, that's such a good question. Um, so today. Uh, I am painting some what was kids Wiz Kids Paladins, right? Wiz Kids Paladins, right. indeed. Yes. So of course, because we're talking about uh, paladins uh, who are swinging swords and wearing armor, Gretchen has a few thoughts. <laughs> I got to Just choose from my paladins, and <laughs> um, I I chose based on um, okay, so. This guy, who I'm currently painting, is doing the closest thing to real swords that I could see. Um, he's, the technique there for longsword would be like the closest thing to a vomtog, it's called. And I was like, oh man, a dude doing that. Uh, so I'm gonna paint him. <laughs> Um, he's a little off balance. He looks like he's struggling there a little bit. He's like hefting back, he's like, Ugh! He's gonna come down really heavy. But you know what? He's also, I, I forgot to mention this. I mentioned this to Dave earlier. <laughs> He's also hitting himself in his own head with his uh, sword there, um, with the cross of his sword, <laughs> which um, that seems like it would hurt. Apparently it's not a good thing to do. I wouldn't recommend yeah. it. But you know what? Other than that, he's doing a good job, and his armor's actually pretty swell. So kudos to him. Miniatures don't do that. <laughs> this dude, though. I don't know what this guy's doing. This guy is dual wielding two, I mean, I don't know if they're supposed to be long swords because mini miniatures sometimes take arming swords that don't look like arming swords. <laughs> and, yep. and they'll be like, yeah, these long swords are totally one handers. It's fine. Um, but they look like long swords and he's dual wielding them. And the thought of dual wielding long swords is incredibly hilarious to me. Because, like, you could have them one-handed. You could. But, um, like, <laughs> don't do it. <laughs> um, 
I, I, I didn't want to tell Gretchen these were for a fantasy game. But. Yeah. <laughs> no, wrong. I really want to have a D and D night with a bunch of other swordsmen, where yep. in order for them to do, like, if they make a roll on something and they're like, I I do this with my sword, before they can actually like roll for it, I want them to prove it's doable. Prove that it's possible. <laughs> <laughs> um, I want them. I want like I want the DM to just be like an accomplished swords person, so not me. And I want them to have to fight the the DM to <laughs> to prove that they could do this in battle. Nice. Um, but yeah, the reason it wasn't just because he was dual wielding long swords or what looked like long swords. Um. It was because he has it, like, on his head. Literally. So, like, this sword is, like, kind of doing a thing that's real. And then this sword, he's, like, yelling, probably because he's cutting his own ear off. It's, like, all the way up here, like, on his ear. And that terrifies me. <laughs> um... <laughs> Because uh, I was telling it just Dave, just amuses me. <laughs> well, because I have a friend awesome. that I was telling Dave. I have a friend who actually forgot he was holding a sharp and went up and rested the sword on his shoulder, and it it just it, it takes absolutely no force with a sharp long sword to uh, cut down into the bone, and just resting it on his shoulder just went slink down <laughs> to the bone. Um, and so this guy, because of that, scares me. I'm like, no. <laughs> This is a man who, good thing he has so much armor, because he's, he's going to injure himself. He's going to cause himself a mischief. He's going to, yeah, he's going <laughs> to, like, Van Gogh his ear before anyone's done fighting him. And he's, like, twisted so weird. I don't know what he's doing. I'm sure out there on the internet is, like, one lone soul who would tell me that this is all legit, but I don't believe them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to look for them, but I don't believe them. Um... But this guy, this guy, I trust other than, like, the fact that he his sword is apparently so heavy that he has to hoist it behind him. I trust him. He's He looks cool. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> I just have a lot of opinions about swords. Don't so, Jamie, that's, what, Jamie, that's what uh, Gretchen is painting. Yeah. <laughs> and you have a couple of paladins. Uh, and I am working on a, uh, a gin from uh, WizKids as well. Um, but rather than going with the kind of the, the standard sort of Aladdin kind of look, I am going to paint him up as if he... I'm going to go with more of sort of a mummy approach. So as if he's made of sand. I like that. There's so sort of coalescing out of sand. The swords the will be uh, kind of real swords. They're enormous. They're like twice the height of your paladin. <laughs> but that's okay because he's a magical... Uh, being, I can forgive. I can forgive it with magic. Yeah, that I can. I can forgive that. But if you're not magical, please don't try <laughs> and build your scimitars like this. <laughs> I don't know. I can't talk about his swords because I don't. I don't wield those types of swords. I. I can't. I. I can't judge what I don't know. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. Uh, cool. <laughs> Excellent. Um. Uh, Next up, uh, David Moffat mentioned uh, my friend got the Terrain Essentials book today, and he got one for, for, for David. That's cool. Very nice. Uh, he said, I didn't know it came with a mini. Uh, so the Terrain Essentials book is a book that I worked on with Mel Bowes, the Terrain Tutor. Uh, we took it to Kickstarter last, well, no, 20, 2019. Uh, we had, it was in Kickstarter, and we have just, um, we're almost finished fulfillment. We've sent out all packages. We're just handling all of the customer service postal issues now. But, uh, yeah, about halfway through last year, I spoke with uh, John Kovaleski from Monster Fight Club, uh, and he helped me put together a, a get a miniature sorted, uh, which was a miniature of Mel, um, Mel himself. Uh, Mel didn't know anything about it, uh, so he was surprised, uh, excited, and angry all at the same time. <laughs> He was a whirlwind of emotions. Um, but, yeah, so it's kind of done so that if uh, you can use it as a scaling model when you're building your terrain. So if you're building it for, for 28 millimeter gaming, you can use that to... Is the doorway the right height? Could Mel fit through the doorway? That kind of thing. So I would um, just where's Waldo him in every campaign. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You would do that. <laughs> just I would just hide him in every single every single thing. Yeah. yeah. That would be good. He's um the miniature is Mel and he's um ubiquitous green hoodie. Um and he's got his notebook and just sort of standing there, a pair of jeans and boots and all that. Yeah. Sort of observing. Yep. Just hidden in every scene. That'd be cool. You'd have to find him. You should definitely do that. We should I have to um get you a copy. But uh, yeah, so we sent those out um, to all of the all of the backers. So, so everybody who got a book got a miniature. There's the plan there. But uh, I think we need to just quickly jump into some of some key's puns. <laughs> None of these minis have canoes. How are they paladin? <laughs> uh, somebody else suggested we have you yeah, have a swords and sorcery night. Good. I think I yeah. I think it'd be fun. <laughs> David Moffat says he used to wield uh, dual wield long swords all the time back in the day. <laughs> Don't tell me you're you're a thousand years old, David Moffat. <laughs> you are the Highlander. Oh no. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Though I was a kid, they were wood, and I mostly just flailed about. <laughs> I never said I was an accomplished swords yeah. person. Yes. <laughs> uh, so he says, I bet these minis have a lot of noisy friends. A real paladin. I mean, yep. the armor clanks. Can't say. <laughs> I know it's late night, but <laughs> maybe go easy on the gin. I'm not going to tell you what I was drinking beforehand. Yes. Mike G. Hi, Mike. <laughs> Don't forget your juice with your gin. Uh, That's the best part of the Late Late yeah. Show, though. <laughs> Oh, and I think Leona is Moobot. Is that right? Yep. Yep. <laughs> may be wondering, you may be wondering why Dave sometimes licks his brush. Yes, just keep a smooth tip with the bristles. We do not recommend eating or consuming paint. This is absolutely true. Don't do as I do. And really, to be honest, you don't even have to do as I say. <laughs> You're no child of mine. Uh... Jamie says, LOL, thank you. And yes, sharp blades are sharp. There are several friends no who train in several me. weapons. Great many stories of letting the guard down for a moment and getting injured while resting. Yep. It's it's a thing. And it was it was actually very interesting. Uh, Natasha, her husband, uh, does is blacksmith for man at arms, right? Yep. And so I helped them for a, at a booth at a convention once. I was there to help answer like swordsy questions and like just kind of watch over the booth so they could go to lunch and that kind of stuff. I had more people try to touch sharp swords, <laughs> even though there was a sign. <laughs> and every single time they would tell me the same thing. They would tell me, no, no, no. It's okay if they touch the sharp edge of the sword with their thumb. They know how. Right. Yep. Indeed. So did you have band-aids on, on hand? <laughs> I no. And I say I on hand. I mean <laughs> nearby. But I don't, on, I, on hands, there were signs. We didn't have liability. I I was like, please just. I was just a tired person. My substitute, like my, from whenever I used to be a substitute teacher and an actual like paraeducator, like my teacher voice came out. Like awesome. I was like, don't you dare! Don't you? <laughs> huh? I see you. Why would you? Ah. Um. But no, we actually do, for the newbie swords people, we do a thing every beginner's class um, where after teaching all the basic swordsmanship skills of how to handle a long sword and um, all the general fuss, we take them outside and we set up a large chunk of pork. Um, and we just, like, just stick it on a, um, on like a pal, uh, on something where that we would normally be cutting with tatami or something. Hang on, did you say cork or pork? Pork. Pork. Yeah, okay, pork. Right actual meat and bone and that, I like, a, just check. a big, yep. like, shoulder. And we stick it up there, and um, we, don't, we don't do a full cut or anything. We just very lightly drop the sword. And usually someone smaller, like myself, um, goes up to demonstrate this because uh, we don't want them to, you know, see muscles or anything like yep. that and assume someone's just putting all their strength. There's very lightly just... 
and you know you'll watch the sharp sword just go straight through no force at all <laughs> and we turn to everyone and we're like this is you know it's kind of like the egg that they would show you in school this is your brain this is your brain on yep. this is your body this is your body with no force of a sharp weapon going through it these are the um, careful people <laughs> please 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 you know don't do anything stupid and then immediately after we'll go up and we'll get to do a real cut Yep. And we'll go straight through it, bone and all. <laughs> <laughs> and yes. everyone's like, okay, all right, lesson learned. We do not play around. Sharp things are sharp. Yep. Um, not mess around. But it, it's a fun exercise that we always do with the newbies just to, you know, kind of drill home that whole, you know, don't be this guy. Don't just put sharp things on your ears. Yep. <laughs> um, no matter how gentle you think you can be, don't. Don't just, you know, run your finger <laughs> along the edge of the sword to see if it's sharp. It, this it is. is. Not, this is not a movie. Yeah. <laughs> um, we promise you. This is not an episode of Forged in Fire. Uh, <laughs> some key. They know. Their thumb bleeds every time, but they know how it bleeds. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> exactly. Um, oh, David Moffat said you didn't drop a silk scarf on the blade, like in The Bodyguard. <laughs> <laughs> No, but for to t when you're sharpening a sword, uh, yep. a thing lots of people do is they'll um, they'll take a piece of paper, and yep. they'll do that with a piece of like a piece of like printer paper. Yeah. Um, because if it's not super sharp, it'll tear through the paper. But if it is very sharp, much like fabric scissors, it'll just make a clean, uh, a clean yep. line. Clean slice. Yeah, fun thing. You can do that with your uh, your cooking knives as well to see how sharp they are, <laughs> just yep. very lightly. Through the paper. I have lots of ragged pieces of paper. Cooking knives are not too sharp. No matter how many times I say, don't put them in the dishwasher. <laughs> I, I run them through the dishwasher, but I also have uh, all of the materials at home to sharpen the them. knives. That's it. I'm bringing mine in. Next you week can. I'm bringing Travis them in. would love it. <laughs> <Sharpen them. laughs> uh, he would. He would sharpen them. He'd just Excellent. be like, okay, do to do to do. Nice. I don't have the patience to be a master swordsman. No. Yeah, I ha I hardly have the patience to be a mediocre swordsman. I don't have the patience <laughs> to be. <laughs> nice. Cool. I was gonna say on here, it's it's a little tough to see the first dry brush that I've done. You can see the colors down here. Um, I've started with sand yellow for my sand. I thought that would be a pretty good color. Sand yellow. I've done a dry brush with uh, bone white, also from Vallejo, from Vallejo Game Color, and I'm about to do a dry brush with uh, ivory, um, which looks kind of white under the under the lights, but uh, yeah, it still has that that tint of uh, of yellow in there. So I'm gonna get that. This will give me a nice. Um, Yeah, just playing with the lighting to see if we can get that. Yeah, we can definitely see some more uh, contrast there now. Yeah, just seeing the, I'm doing a dry brush here because dry brushing, uh, rather than sort of doing a layered highlight, dry brushing gives you a, um, or it leaves a kind of texture behind. Uh, particularly when you do it, sort of do the dry brushing kind of quick and, and rough like that rather than being focused. Uh, so to accentuate that sort of sand look, I need a, need a texture on there. And dry brushing will help um, sort of start that. What I'll do after this dry brushing is go and do a little bit of shading. So I'll get some uh, washes and just paint those into certain areas. And then uh, maybe a little bit of glazing to just tint some of the, the highlights back. And then I can come in with some stippling doing all the things, all the techniques. So, <laughs> helping Dave sharpen his blades is a knife gesture. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> Thank you very much, Sumgi. It would be a knife gesture. <laughs> but, uh, very cool. So now that we've talked about what, we've, what we're painting and how we're doing it, uh, what are you folks working on 
at the moment. I say at the moment, that could mean right now, or it might mean tomorrow, yesterday, That's somewhere else point. in, the, in the, the continuum. So, let us know. Oh, good. I think he's coming along pretty well. With the shading. I'm going to start with uh, the Seraphim Sepia from uh, GW as the first kind of shade. So I also have uh, Agrax Earthshade here, which is much darker. So the Seraphim Sepia will be a nice uh, kind of subtle way to start. So I can start working out where I need to um, then add more depth later on. Should be good. Cool. And Gretchen, what colors did you start with for your palette? Um, I started off with gunmetal, and then I did black over it to give it kind of a more worn-ish kind of vibe. And then I was like, man, we'll highlight in silver. And then I messed up. Um, oh. I just didn't have a straight line. Okay. I just <laughs> blobs it on there instead of doing a nice little dainty highlight on the edge of the armor. Right. <laughs> Um, so then, then I just was like, okay, this is fine. We'll just blend it and hide our mistakes with more gunmetal. Well, that um, sounds like a plan. So that's where we're at. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I think that that guy's armor is basically essentially like full, full plate. He's in full it? plate, yeah. yeah. There is, I can't tell if on his thighs he actually has like plate or if he's just wearing pants and oh, okay. just, you know, letting his thighs hang out and and not be as armored as the rest of him. Um, for some, I might just for the sake of uh, having some color go in there and make it where he's wearing pants. Okay. Um, even though that would be kind of <laughs> sad for him. <laughs> just yeah. no, no armor on your thighs, just... Um, there's nothing there that would, you know, that would need protection. It's golden. Yeah. Don't worry about it. Absolutely zero, zero important um, arteries or, or veins running through there, right? Well, he's definitely not wearing any kind of, like, groin protection, <laughs> so... Right. Okay. <laughs> Which is strange, because a lot of uh, fantasy miniatures... This paladin is ready for battle. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Seth Cross. Thanks for joining. Well, hey, Seth. Looks like some people answered your question, Dave. All right. What are we cool? Okay. Roger is finishing Ramsey II from Monumental. Almost Ooh. done. Excellent. Some key is uh, testing a paint scheme for a Thousand Suns. Uh, and David Moffat was doing oil washes on 15 millimeter tanks. Are you still working on tanks, David? It's not even Thanksgiving David, it's anymore. It's not Thanksgiving anymore. It's not November. I don't know. It's like, he did have a lot of tanks, though. He did. So, not completely surprising. For David Moffat, Thanksgiving is forever. <laughs> Every day is Thanksgiving. Every day, Every day is Thanksgiving. <laughs> It's Thanksgiving in his heart, <laughs> yes. <laughs> These are the facts. Excellent. That sounds good. Uh, Jamie's asking, uh, have either of you painted Tau from 40K? I, I think we did. That sounds did familiar, did we? Uh, I don't know. I, I don't remember us painting Tau. Did we talk about Tau while painting Dave something else? in Tau. Personally. I think. Right? Have I? I think we did. Hobby Hangout, maybe? Uh, no. No, really? Yeah, oh. really. Yeah, no, no Tau. Um, I have painted Tau in the past. No, what it is is when we see the paint schemes that people paint, we're always very impressed. Oh, right, yep. In yes, yeah, we, we definitely definitely see um, quite a few Tau schemes in the, uh, in the group for sure. But uh, yeah, it's been a, a long time since I've painted Tau. Tau are a lot of flat panels and a lot, a lot, a lot of edge highlighting. I will just um, accentuate that one more time. A lot of edge highlighting. And even that, saying it that way, I'm, I'm being uh, kind. 
<laughs> I'm not, I'm not overestimating. But uh, yeah, do you have some questions about it, Jamie? We're uh, happy to answer questions about painting cow. In the uh, Warhammer 40,000 universe, uh, where everything is, not everything, but most things are very um, sort of dark and grim and gothic and um, kind of uh, technology has been uh, decaying for 10,000 years kind of thing. Nobody remembers how to put something together or why something works a particular way, but they just uh, continue to maintain, try and maintain the the things that are assembled and pray to the gods to, um, or the emperor, to keep things working. The Tau, on the other hand, are a, would be considered like a young upstart race of aliens who um, are all about sort of being on the, the cutting edge of their technology and keeping keeping things uh, sort of moving forward and adapting and evolving. Okay, we see how that wash is um, sort of working on the um, the gin there. Now, what I was originally thinking is that I was going to concentrate this on the the lower sort of half and not worry about it so much on the upper half. But because there's a lot of detail, particularly in that face, I'm going to take this uh, the seraphim sepia wash all the way up, just so I can make sure I get sort of the facial details to stand out. So. Plus he has a lot of detail on, uh, on his chest there. So that should be good. They were saying uh, they, ke they keep coming. It was a hobby blitzkrieg. <laughs> nice. All about painting the tanks. Excellent. Is anybody else painting anything at the moment? No? No, they just came to watch. Came to watch. Fantastic. Over the last week, I've been... I did some more conversions for my uh, Nurgle army, my 1 of 40,000 uh, Death Guard army. Getting ready for the release of the Codex very soon. Ooh. So the Codex is the... Um, the book, like the, the gaming rule book, essentially, that tells you all about that particular army. And every edition or two of the game, there's a, a new codex for each army. And the Death Guard one is, I think it goes up for pre-order this weekend. So it'll be the following weekend that'll be released in stores. I'm very excited about that. That's fun. Yeah, it has been good. I, I think I've, sh I've shown some of the the projects on um, when we were doing uh, our Hobby Hangout edition. And I think I also, I've also put some into the uh, painting articles that I do for Game Trade Magazine. Probably sh should post some up in the group. That would be the way to do it. Yeah. But speaking of miniatures in the group, Leona. Yes. Oh! I leant back to see if uh, Leona was in her chair. I am, sorry. <laughs> she's, she's slouching to the other side. I can't see I am. <laughs> I'm not silent. Yes, do you want to look at some? <laughs> yeah, let's look um, at some minis. Actually, yeah, that'd, that'd be great if we could. Um, first, I'm just going to answer a quick um, question here. Or oh, we'll, we'll basically go back to Jamie. Um, yeah, I'm getting ready to start a Tau army. They look great. Just kind of wanted to see what you guys do um, when painting them. And also, love to start Death Guard. Yeah, Death Guard and Tau are two very different sort of approaches to painting. They kind of have a lot of detail and texture and slime and ooze and dirt and rust and grit and that kind of thing. But the Tau are typically very clean. Um, yeah, I like all the bright paint colors. Yeah, 
Yeah. Generally, you, see, you do like, see a lot of... I remember of... one of them was, like, really bright green, and then the other one had, like, a purple yep. thing going on. I think we've seen a, um, some very cool uh, blue and orange as well. Yes, yes. Uh, so much so that I didn't realize it was Warhammer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, this is definitely not Grimdark. Right? It's, it's very... Uh, okay, what? <laughs> very sort of uh, Mecha-influenced, for sure. <laughs> I but, can appreciate uh, that. It does, um, it does add a nice um, kind of contrast to the, uh, to the system itself. Also, Seth Cross is painting up a scorpion bust. Cool. That's pretty cool. Is that a bust of a scorpion, or is that the character scorpion? I'm going to go for character. <laughs> um, I have to learn all about that working for my game store. Is learning all about uh, Death Guard, I hope. Yeah, I think so. Everybody needs to le know l more about uh, the God of Death and Pestilence. Uh, so he says Leona is napping in her chair. Yes. Yes, completely. And by no, that, really. I mean no. No, <laughs> it's just at slow. All. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't the late, late show. Uh, and, uh, okay, oh, folks, yes, there's a, a link in there. Uh, I just popped in a link to our uh, Game Trade Media giveaway. So if you want to, uh, it's, uh, is it Wonder Woman? Uh, the the game? It? Yes, sorry. Yeah, sorry. It's a yes. Happy Little Minis giveaway. <laughs> so don't ask me. I just, I just that, work here. Oh, Game there's Trade Media one. ones that we're doing through Game Trade as well. Oh, okay. So we have, like, a couple giveaways. Um, a couple giveaways. Okay. Yeah. If people want Definitely. the link to the Wonder Woman one, I can put it in the chat. Just let me know. I think that would be cool. That would be super good. We, uh, when did we paint those? We painted those. Oh, gosh. Last year? Um, September? October? <laughs> last year. September, October sometime. So long ago last year it was. was. So long yes. time ago. <laughs> in a Fantastic. Far, far away. Yes. <laughs> Indeed, the Death Guard are so fun to paint, David. And Roger was talking about the codex and codexes and books and the way that the codexes and the army lists, army books and battle tomes, I guess they call them for Age of Sigma, how they all fit in. But yeah, there's a lot to learn. It'll be all good. Okay, cool. Yes. Oh, uh, and Seth says, yes, Scorpion from Mortal Kombat. Mortal Kombat! Did you say Mortal Wombat? <laughs> I identify. <laughs> that game. <laughs> Mortal Wombat. Yeah, where it's, it's I mean, just all Australian critters. I'm sure it's out there. I'm that sure it's out there. So somebody, much... somebody has concepted it at least. <laughs> That'd be good. I would okay. play that game. Uh, first up, we're looking at Chris Cox, uh, Nemesis Prime, an Optimus Mini from the Transformers line. Mm. Very cool. I'm thinking Nemesis Prime must be the evil. It's the evil Optimus Prime. You can tell by the Decepticon badges on his shoulder. Yeah. But yeah, looking very cool, Chris. We painted some of those. Uh, oh, Chris Walker, a couple of Anakins I painted up recently. I think um, right, there were two in the. Yeah, there, there's one on in Facebook. this photo. Sorry, there's yeah. only one. <laughs> that, that's that's cool. We're good. Imagine what the other one would look like. I, I am. I'm picturing it now. <laughs> it's pretty cool. It's like a large donut. <laughs> <laughs> with sprinkles. Anybody wants to bring me a large donut with sprinkles, that'd be great. Oh my uh, God, but yes. um, <laughs> but no, uh, Chris has uh, done another fantastic job. One of the things I always love about Chris's paint jobs is that they're, to me there's a lot of uh, fairly uh, neutral uh, colors or neutral tones and then something that just pops. Yeah. There's something sort of not quite electric on it, but in this one, Particular, it's a not so much electric, but laser. <laughs> yeah, but, the, that blue definitely the the glowy effect of that lightsaber is definitely where yeah. it needs to be. Yeah, yeah, Chris did an awesome job there, and I, he hasn't he isn't selling it with like um, object source lighting approach. If you look at that glove, there's no sort of blue um, glow on there, but it's just the glow within the painting. Um, done a really Awesome job. It looks fantastic, particularly against that black background. But again, nice work, Chris. Looks great. Oh, Chris Hood. He's been up a daredevil 
from Marvel Crisis Protocol. Yeah, this looks very neat. I don't remember Daredevil having a whip. I think it's um, like it has the the nunchucks. Oh. Uh, so I think it's it's those. So you can see the he's got it. In, he's holding it in his left hand. Yeah. And then right just out from his right hand is the the other end. So it might be one of those things where it, it extends when he when he wants it to extend and contracts when he wants it to contract. I okay. just assume. Or does it turn into his? Um, he has like a staff. Doesn't yeah. He? Yeah. Okay. I just assume it's just he has lots of gadgets. Right. He's one of those yeah. superheroes that has so many gadgets that I don't plenty? question it when there's a new one. Right. Okay. Who's it like with Netflix? Batman or with. Um, there's other ones that did not. I can see them in my brain. They just uh, <laughs> like the Batarang. Yeah, no, that was Batman. Yeah, that it was, was also Batman. Walking <laughs> <laughs> stick. Nightwing. Right now, I think yeah, that's, it's walking stick. Yeah, that's the other one adjacent to Batman. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, Robin Man. Like I, I just don't question it. Okay, that's fair. But no, I think um, Chris has done a great job here. Um, I re really love the basing as well. Lots of great um, texture and variety of sort of colors there. The broken, uh, like broken headstone, I think. And because the um, the red is quite saturated, going with that um, desaturated green, and the flocking on the base balances it nicely. But yeah, great work, Chris. Nice one. Daredevil's jump rope, says David Buffett. <laughs> <laughs> He I'm likes not to jump it. rope. I love it. He does. Yep. <laughs> uh, David Vow, uh, my first ever orc. Well, boss is finally complete. I love cool. that shade of green used for it's like a cool tone green. Yeah. Yep. It is very cool, isn't it? Yeah. It. But uh, but goes it goes up to a nice sort of almost to the like an ivory for the mm -hmm. highlights. It's a little bit of warmth pushed back in there. But yeah, great uh, great depth and, and contrast on it. Looks uh, very cool. And I love the squig <laughs> on the right there. That, uh, yeah, this looks great. Those eyes look like crazy. That one is a pet. <laughs> you want a Not the as orc, a pet? but the. <laughs> you want a squig as a pet? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Look at it. Yeah. Look at its face. No. I would not take that as a pet. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it definitely looks great. Nice work, David. Excellent work on the orcs. Oh, very cool. Yep. Graham painted up some more of the uh, Walking Dead All Out War. So we have uh, Carl! Carl! Get in the house, Carl! <laughs> and uh, Father Gabriel. Uh, oh. It's my yep. favorite compilation video is him saying Carl. Right. Carl, Someone took Carl. every time he said Carl, and it's great. <laughs> <laughs> it's fantastic. It's like 10 minutes of it, right? It really is, yes. <laughs> and it's hilarious. Yeah. But how true of, like, a parent in that situation. Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> I feel like my mom would have used my whole name a whole lot. <laughs> yeah. doesn't matter where we go. Everybody knows my daughter's name. But, uh, yeah, no, this looks fantastic. Nice work, Graham. Very cool. Craig has uh, pinned up my version of a Shaman Minotaur from Cast and Play. Ooh, I've not heard of Cast and Play. Ooh. I've not heard of a Shaman Minotaur, but that's awesome. But it is pretty cool, isn't it? Yep. Yeah, this that... one, um, it was definitely hard to get a good angle. Right. So I understand Greg's. Like, he had a couple angles of it, and this was kind of the best one. Yeah. Um, but his hand actually sticks out straight, like behind okay. him are his fingers. Oh, right, yep. And his, so his, his one hand's holding his like staff axe thing. Yep. And then his other hand's actually like pushing out, straight out from his right, body. Right, yeah. I can see that it's like two of the fingers are yeah. at the top of the mane there. Yeah. And then his foot is actually lifting up. Like, his okay. one foot's down, and his other foot's lifting up, like, in a lunge type of... Right, so he's about to bring the bring it down it's in a stomp. It's a dynamic... It is, piece. yeah. It's incredible. I think, um, I, it's, it's my opinion that all miniatures have at least one golden angle, <laughs> where you can find the, like, 
the perfect place to to shoot them from. There are a whole bunch of miniatures have a lot of great golden angles. Right. But when your miniature only has one, it can be so tough to find it. Yes. <laughs> so tough. I think um, that some of the things from this remind me of the uh, Ogroid Thermoturge. Um, try saying that three times fast. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's from the uh, the Warhammer Quest Silver Tower box set. Okay. Um, that's one where it, it's kind of doing this, where the bulk of the the model that you want to see is sort of from this angle, right. but the head is looking the opposite direction. The face is looking away from where the best angle of the body is. Um, so that one, I'm pretty sure, has like one golden angle. <laughs> but uh, no, this is looking really good, Greg. Um, and I'm loving the um, sort of the stars on that um, sort of the dark purple. I'm not sure if it's a ribbon flowing from the uh, the axe or if it's magical energy that uh, the shaman is summoning. But yeah, looks very cool. Nice work. Oh, Jason Kohler, a dwarf cleric. I like the choice to make him blonde. You don't see a lot of blonde dwarfs. Blonde dwarfs? Yeah. yeah. I feel like that's a good, a fun design choice. That's true. Yeah, that's definitely cool. I think um, one of the things I hear that is that is he got a flask out there? Yeah. Is it a flask or is it a um, like a religious icon? Maybe in, both. If we'll you pray to the god of icon, I think it's. I don't think it's a flask. I, Im imagine though, if your god was like the god of um, liquor. Yeah. Yep. So maybe it, it could is be both. Religious both. icon, flask. <laughs> All right, then. Speaking of gin. Um, <laughs> but no, this is looking very cool, Jason. Uh, yeah, I'm going to go with uh, Gretchen here. I think the, the color choice for the beard and the hair is um, is very cool. It's And you've got that, you've got the bright blue, the sort of the saturated blue, which is balancing against the, the desaturated orangey brown of the gloves and the boots. Um, but everything works sort of in a circle to bring the view towards the face and the, and the beard. So nice work with that, Jason. Good one. Oh, Jason uh, Neblack has started work on uh, the greenery. Yes, I did see this. Um, this is on the back of the giant stag beetle. Um, I but, saw that yep. up on uh, up on our Facebook. So that stag beetle, I think, is about that sort of that sort of size, which is super cool. Uh, so I think Jason's going through and painting this first, and then Alariel, who is the um, sort of the elf demigod, who's riding on the back of it, is going to come a little bit later. But uh, yeah, looking really good, is Jason. This Warhammer. Ah, uh, it is. Yeah, it's from Age of Sigma. Gotcha. Sorry, okay. from the uh, Sylvaneth Army Range, or the also known to many folks as the Wood Elves. But uh, I think Jason painted the um, all of the greenery on the back there, all the leaves and and so on, by painting them uh, white first and then using contrast paints. So. That's awesome. But yeah, it is looking really good. I'm really loving the the blue there as well. The highlights for the um, the blue are looking, looking really good. Nice work, Jason. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, Munchkin is always great. Yeah, I had to add <laughs> yeah. these. Yeah, they're uh, they're super cool. So yeah, these these look wonderful, Jeff. Um, I think you've done a great great job in there. You've really uh, the the painting that you've done has really accentuated that uh, sort of comic strip quality. Yeah, it's all nice and simple. And I think the the more sort of flat color, flatter colors of, for example, on the the burning bull there, it's kind of flat red, um, just really helps push that, uh, the, f the look of the fire, the flames, where you've got that, uh, that wonderful gradation out the end of, uh, like the tips of each of those flames. Yeah, looking really nice. Great work, Jeff. 
Jody has uh, painted up some of the Marvel United starter sets uh, from uh, Come On. So these fantastic sort of chibi style things. Yeah, looking yeah, really I good. Yeah, I have not seen these. Yeah, I can't, um, I can't remember when these came out. So it was cute. Did to- these come out a while ago? No, they, I think these were um, kind of fall. Okay. Yeah, it's just so like maybe some like stuff September, October. With everything going on. Yeah, I agree. They do look great. I love these. Yep. Yeah, they look uh, look really, really cool, very cool. Particularly and Captain America. It always looks great. And I think the the shading, the, the shading and the highlighting that you've done on um, Captain America there looks really cool. It's getting on the A on his um, yeah. on his hat. What would it, what would you call that? Would it be his mask? His his symbol. He, I mean, his it's hat. kind of it's, it's hel- his helmet almost. Yeah. Well, I guess it depends on like in the in the movies, the material I think is more of a helmet. Yeah. But then, yeah. like, I've seen some renditions where it's literally leather, and right. that to me is a mask. Right. Yeah, that's fair. Let's go with let's go with helmet. Cool. His helmet. Let's go with that. But no, it looks great, Jody. Done a really nice job yeah, there. Yeah, I really like it. Looking forward to see the rest of them. Awesome. Okay, so that's all that we're going to look at for now. Okay. No worries. We can get back into painting. So, Gretchen, tell us a little bit what you've been uh, working on. Um. So, I noticed that he has a little bit of... Like his shoulder and his arm and his elbow, he doesn't have the same um, armor on this arm as he does on this arm. On this arm, he has shoulder protection there. He has an elbow guard. He has his gauntlets, all that done up on his right arm. And um, his left arm, he just has a gauntlet. So don't know what happened there. (laughs) As I said, he's very prepared. He like he's well he's almost uh, one half of him is prepared. Um and maybe he just he doesn't might, care about his left arm. Maybe Maybe he was asleep and then like the alarm bell started ringing he had to jump he's up. Late. And, oh no, got to And 15 minutes later he could only get on half of Yeah, he's well, just running to paladin school with toast in his mouth. Right. Um a la every shonen anime. Maybe that's part of his backstory. He's trying to get <laughs> He's more late to armor. He's late right. to paladin school. It's he fine. He could be like the Mandalorian. I get paid in Beska. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, like, his pants are just pants after careful inspection. And his arm doesn't have anything. It's just arm. So, um, <laughs> I'm going through. I, I've given him a blue tunic. Um, and I am doing some highlights there. You can see them. They're blurry. Um, but you can see them. Uh, so I'm giving him highlights on his little blue tunic there. I might go in with some of the gunmetal where that armpit is and almost give him, like, chain mail to pretend that his armpit is protected. Um, <laughs> it's weird because for as much armor as he has, there... Quite a lot of arteries are exposed. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> like he's probably one of the most armored swordsmen I've ever painted, and yet, um, and yet the most important parts. Important parts um, are not covered. He's he is a his chest is covered at least. Um. So I'm going to go ahead and that, and that's going to be blue. I don't know what color I want to make his pants, if I want to make them blue as well. But then I'm like, that's such a weird get-up, like, underneath the armor. I've, that'd be blue tunic and blue pants. Just, it like... Might, it might look a little bit like, uh, like a blue big Yeah, blue like onesie. a blue onesie. That's, <laughs> <laughs> that's what my paladins all wear. <laughs> underneath Onesies, my armor, I would blue. totally wear a onesie, too. Um... <laughs> he was really late for paladin school. Right. He just yes. got straight up with the pajamas and and went with it. Um, so I was thinking maybe a dark brown or something would look a little bit more 
uh, put together. Okay. Uh, but I definitely wanted to break it up with uh, color-wise, make it a little bit more interesting. Right. Maybe black. Um, that could be good. Don't know. Don't know about his face yet. I've kind of just been ignoring it because I um, hate the fact that I'm going to have to poke around his elbows <laughs> to All get right, at his okay. face. <laughs> um, oh, Sean says black leather. Yeah, okay. Uh, big yep. blue overall. That could work. <laughs> <laughs> that armor gets chilly. It can, um, definitely. I would get cold. I know a lot of friends that hate the fact that they get super warm under their gambesons and whatnot, and I run around because I'm always cold naturally. <laughs> right. So I'm like, this is the best! I'm finally warm! And they're dying. Nice. <laughs> um, sorry, just quickly, I wanted to point out that um, some keys suggested that he dances to his own tunic. <laughs> Uh, Jason, <laughs> when you talk about saturated versus desaturated color, what does that mean? Good, um, good question. So saturation is how like bright a color is. So if you again, go into like yeah, Instagram or Photoshop and you see the little sliding bar that will say sat saturation, when you pull it all the way to the right, you'll notice all of those colors get super, super bright and opaque, and it'll it'll make them all kind of like the brightest they can be, the most vibrant. Very vibrant. They yeah. can be. Um, the truest forms of those colors, right? And then if you slide that to the left on Photoshop or Instagram or whatever, what have you, um, and it gets rid of the, desatur of the saturation, if it desaturates it, then it turns everything less and less colorful till it's in black and white. So when we, um, it's kind of like the best visual representation that I can yep. think of on the fly, is that little slidey bar. I'm gonna use one that's slightly different, and I'm gonna use um, things that are behind us. Oh yeah, that, that's good, so, real life examples. Right behind Gretchen there, um, <laughs> to Gretchen's left is uh, Scott Pilgrim's uh, board game. So that yellow there is a saturated yellow. Oh, yeah. So it's as it's almost as yellow as yellow can be. Whereas behind me, on this crisis protocol box, up here across the top, I'm gonna. There we go. My hand is moving the right way. Uh, <laughs> this this yellow here you need is to a work very, on your vanna whiting. <laughs> yes, um, is a desaturated yellow. Um, where uh, so if you take were to take yellow and mix in um, a light gray or a white, that'll take that intensity out of the, the yellow. Um, the green behind uh, Gretchen there is, oh, no, that other green? That green, which green? It's right behind your head at the moment. That green. That green, yep. <laughs> <laughs> I'm wearing green, I don't. Keep your toes. So that green there is saturated, whereas the Gretchen, uh, the Gretchen that, <laughs> that the sweater is wearing, the, the sweater, sweater Gretchen the is wearing is a desaturated green. So, um, yeah, it's it's all about the uh, the intensity, the pure. I guess the purity the pure, of the hue. Yeah, because the you can use a vibrancy tool, and that's kind of a, a separate thing. But the purity of the color is what I would yeah. say. So, um, yeah, when you mix in grays or um, black or white, they all those things will desaturate um, the color. So, sorry, <laughs> you know, if we can just go back quickly to Jason's. Dwarf. So we can see that the blue is is has that intensity, that um, that vibrancy. So it is a saturated blue, uh, similar to the um, to the hair for the, the beard is very um, saturated, but the um, brown on the um, brown kind of by its nature is is like a desaturation because it's orange mixed with black. So, um, yeah, you've got that desaturated orangey red kind of look out there. So it's just another one of the, the things you can use for contrast. So you can use tonal contrast, light colors, dark colors. So for this, you've got your light color is your um, armor, all of the silver armor there. Dark color is probably the blue. Um, I go with that, and then the others sort of work in the middle. Yeah, I think the. the I think a lot of the times too, you see a lot of desaturation commonly with like dark, gritty reboots on like TV. Like The Witcher was desaturated. 
Right. The whole the whole series was like anything by Zack Snyder. Yeah. <laughs> saturated. Um, so yeah, it's, it's just that taking that taking the color out of the world. When That's the, the saddest show up, when, way to put it. When the Dementors show up in Harry Potter. <laughs> Taking the color, color out, out of the, the world. world. Tell me I'm wrong. That nope. being said, Dave, it's, it's a nice tool to use when painting a mini because then it helps you just create another level of contrast. Yeah, yep, exactly. Exactly. If all of your colors are... Um, Where's rainbow bright when you need it? Saturated, yeah. It's, <laughs> It's really tough. I mean, Lisa Frank, saturated. Hmm? <laughs> Lisa Frank. But have you yeah. never heard of her? It's like I, the 90s. Oh, no. man, Dave. You would know oh, if you saw it, maybe. Gosh. I don't know. I, I got probably. you, Gretchen. You were alive <laughs> then. I was alive then? <laughs> yes. Are you sure? Um, That's true. I was just obviously not paying attention then. But, uh, yeah. No doubt I would see it. I'm terrible with names, so... I'll have to go and have a look now. <laughs> but I mean, even something like a um, like a unicorn with a rainbow tail. Yeah. It, the unicorn itself is the desaturated part. The white, like, the white um, hair on the. What, do you say fur? The mane. The coat. Oh, the coat. Uh, so the coat. Yeah, of, yeah, yeah. The like coat. The, yeah, the coat of the horse. The fur the of, of the, the horse. Fur of the horse. Saying fur of the horse <laughs> sounds odd. Feels odd. I could be wrong, but uh, yeah, that's that's what would be the desaturated part to give that that contrast against the uh, the bright and vibrant rainbow rainbow tail and mane. Can't believe I just used a unicorn as a painting example. <laughs> yeah. So hopefully that helps, um, Jason. And yes, there's that. Okay. Um, I talked about a little bit about stippling before. Um, and now that I'm painting in the darker shadows here, I'm using a mix of the Seraphim Sepia and um, one of my favorites, Charred Brown. Uh, rather than sort of putting this on as a wash, I'm actually just dabbing it around, uh, oh, of course, there we go, we've got that sword. There's, that's not the golden angle, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, but into those shadow areas, I'm going, I'm painting with sort of small dabs. I'm not sure if we can catch that on the, the camera. It, it, it'll become more obvious. We'll throw it up on the spinner later, and we'll see how that... The spinner fixes everything. It does, it does. <laughs> But yeah, just adding a little um, little extra texture to give it that um, sort of granular feel. So I'll go through and do this in all of sort of the areas where I want to have that shading. I will come back and do another dry brush over it all, I think. Because now I've got that sort of glazed, uh, deeper look on the sand there. You could probably use just a little bit, a uh, little bit more punch in certain areas. Somebody might be wondering if I've done this sort of done this technique before. The answer is no. I'm experimenting. I'm taking a leaf from your uh, lightning bolts of last week. <laughs> Dave, you're a trailblazer. A trailblazer? Or maybe Gretchen's a trailblazer, and then. I'm just following. Yeah. <laughs> I should probably. I'm not going to lead the way. <laughs> finish the lightning bolts and be like, "This is a thing." Yeah. It's too much responsibility when you lead. It, it is. It's so much responsibility. So many unfinished minis on this. We're horrible <laughs> examples, Dave. Fun. So we're horrible examples. Horrible examples? No. Yeah. Never finishing. We're wonderful examples. Funky says, I assume Dave will get his hydration from his brush. <laughs> right, yes. <laughs> this is true. Dave only needs a tiny little bit of water. I do spend most of the time partially dehydrated, so. I'm, I'm attempting to be better about hydration. Right. 
Now, whether I will be successful in that is an entirely different story. That's fair. Uh, we go in there. Okay. I think it's tough as well because the camera's sort of shooting from here and I'm painting from this direction. Sort of underneath in the shadows there. So that's why it's also difficult. So I'll try and spin it around and see if we can find a good angle. Okay, so it has a like a pouch here at the back. Obviously, people might be wondering why a uh, creature made out of sand requires a pouch. To carry his things. Carry his things. Carry yeah. his sandy things. Yep. I mean, obviously the sand doesn't bother him. No. And we went to the be he went to the beach last summer and just brought it all home with him. Yeah. You know, a trick for getting the sand off of you at the beach. What's that? Supposed to use baby powder. Baby powder? Yeah. Like cover yourself in baby powder? Uh, no, when you're trying to get it off, you just baby powder and it's supposed to dust away. Okay. Interesting. I've not tried it because normally I just rinse off in the ocean. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, but, you know, for, for those who have back. sandier lives than I do. <laughs> 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 I wonder if it worked the same in the car. So whenever you go to the beach, you always end up with sand in the car. It I just don't. stays there forever. I don't understand these problems that <laughs> other people are having. How about when you rinse off in the ocean, but then you still have to walk on the beach to get to your car? But you get like somebody to carry you, Leona. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that's how you do it. You know, I've had to carry someone on the beach before, <laughs> and my my friend and I went to the beach, and it was later in the evening, and um, oh, the I crabs. Can see this story. Is <laughs> this the, is a late night story. Late, the late, late show. Late, <laughs> late, late, late show, show story. Late <laughs> no, we were like fourteen, fifteen at the time, um, and uh, she wasn't aware that I guess crabs naturally live on the beach. <laughs> Right. And so we're walking back to our hotel Hi, Jamie, um, because it was getting later and the crabs are running all on the beach. Oh. Hi, uh, Jamie. Oh, hey. Trey, keep going. And um, she was terrified of them and like scooby dooed into my arms <laughs> and had me carry her back. Uh, thankfully, she, she was a small, you know, a small human being and uh, I could just carry her <laughs> but uh, yeah she was terrified of the crabs on the beach that's fair the thing is is the crabs are more scared of you I wasn't scared of the crabs I was just like okay there's crabs it's a beach this is where they <laughs> live I don't <laughs> um excellent David Moffat doesn't trust beaches. They're shifty. <laughs> <laughs> Sunky says beaches can't sand them. Uh, yeah. Crabs are awesome. Crabs I love are the delicious, beach. by the way. I want to go swimming with sharks. Yeah, uh, okay. I do not want to swim with a shark. I do want to swim with the sharks. That's a thing you can do. But I do not want to. You <laughs> do not want to? <laughs> It'd be so much fun. I, I used to know a guy uh, who worked at the aquarium. He was like their head shark guy. Okay. Tell him I want to swim with the sharks. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, well, all, all the you sharks. You could feed uh... the sharks, but you, they didn't want you to swim with them. Right. All the sharks at the Baltimore Aquarium, they're... Oh, nice. They're not... Sorry, I keep moving this around. No, it's okay. <laughs> they're not, um... They're not scary. Particularly dangerous, are they? No. No, they're all they're all cool. My favorite thing, though, is the giant... Uh, in the shark area, they they do have this cool art piece on the wall that shows the sizes of all the oh, sharks yeah. leading oh, yeah, up to I the great white one. shark. Yeah. And good. it's so interesting to actually... Because you... Like, you can see pictures of great whites. Yeah. But... 
it's different to actually see like a comparison of an average sized great white next to you when you're standing there and being like, oh my God, this is actually big. <laughs> yeah. If I saw this in the ocean, I don't know what I'd do. I'd be like, ooh, I'm swimming with the A shark. <laughs> Yeah. Not the sharks, a shark. I don't know if I want this one. <laughs> <laughs> when uh, when I was in Australia uh, at the end of 2019 uh, for Christmas, uh, they'd had quite a lot of shark sightings along the coast um, near uh, where my parents live in Newcastle. And some uh, enterprising folks had uh, created a company where they would um, normally they'd have helicopters going up and down the coast looking for sharks and uh, they said well we can do this with drones we can set up on that headland and we'll fly the drones up and down the beaches and we'll start out and we'll just do it for two hours a day at kind of peak times uh, and then sort of a week later they were doing it eight hours a day and they had contracts to sort of do it all summer, flying drones up and down the beach looking for sharks. That's awesome. Yep. I was like, that's a very enterprising somebody who's done that. And I don't know uh, how to track sharks in the water, cool. but I do know how to track uh, whale footprints, which whale are very footprints. similar. Whales have feet? Um, no. Sounds unlikely. <laughs> I'm not believing this story. <laughs> They're but they do wild. have, um, so whales and even smaller things like porpoises and dolphins leave these kind of footprints in the water. Um, so you can technically do it for smaller little critters. But whales, when they when their flukes move, yep. um, particularly, they'll, um, the way it kind of disturbs the water okay. leaves a imprint on the surface of the water okay. and it's called footprints because if you're looking at the surface of the water um looking for whales or you know something like that and you're trying to track them either you know to sightsee or to observe them in their habitat or anything like that you'll see a very large um almost about the size of whatever fluke of the whale that you're you're looking for you'll see a large circle um pattern on top of the water. So the, okay. the typical pattern, like the little tiny waves and whooshes and whatnot that you'd see on the water, it gets disturbed and you see a, a kind of almost strangely serene circle instead. And you'll see one of those, um, that kind of disturbed pattern on top of the water. And okay. then a certain distance later, you'll see another one because it's in the pattern of the, of okay. the water being pushed yep. by that tail. Um, and it's called footprints, and that's how people who go on like tour whale tours and whatnot will track. Okay. Um, or Very scientists cool. looking to you know spot them or whatnot. Um, sharks don't swim that way though, no. so no idea how you track a shark. <laughs> <laughs> yep. uh, I think it has to do more with their feeding spots. Like I they, I would yeah. think so too. Like, they know where like you you they... chum for sharks, I yeah. guess. So. They kind of know. Yep. Jamie, Tommy is hands down the best ranger. Yes, he is. I don't know why we're talking about the Green Power Ranger, but um, <laughs> yes, he is the best. And Sean, glad I could help you learn a cool whale fact. <laughs> <laughs> I have Somebody lots. wants to know, do they have a card shark on the mural, mural too? They should. Yep. Hey. hey. That would be fun. It is good. If you're ever in Baltimore, make sure you uh, make time to check out the National Aquarium. It is a very cool aquarium. Yeah. I never realized how nice it was. <laughs> <laughs> it's very nice. And they have tons of things you can do there, too. They also have a replication of a um, megalodon jaw. That's yeah. All right. A replica one um, up that you can like stand in to to get your see. Photo taken. They yeah, get your like photo taken. See how how big so can, a whale spine. Yeah, you can yeah. stick your hand in. So 
That's always super fun. Definitely cool. It's also terrifying to know how big a megalodon was. <laughs> <laughs> well, because you see the teeth, and like even the largest like megalodon teeth that you see are like this big. Right. But like that doesn't give you insight to like. Oh yeah, a sense of how big. How grand? Yeah, you're just like that. That's a tooth. Like. <laughs> Be tough. Okay, sorry. Let's try. There we go. All right. This guy's coming together. What Sweet. color should I make his belt? Should I make it black to to match his pants? Is he is he fashion? Um. Or what I color make are you it... doing the boots? Belt and boots. Have well, to match. he has he he has armor. So they're silver. <laughs> Maybe brown. Yeah. Maybe brown. Because brown will give you a little bit of hint of orange there. Yeah, mix it against the blue. Dark brown or, or like this brown. We're judging you. Quick, Dave. Fashion. Uh, I would go for the one on in your right hand. This one. Yep. Okay. We'll judge you if it looks poorly. Sure, that's yeah. cool. No. <laughs> okay. I'm ready to be judged, uh, and judged harshly. <laughs> Who is the worst Power Ranger? Um, I don't know. I'm not mean. <laughs> I, who was the blue one? Billy? <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm hating on Billy, guys. <laughs> Billy wasn't bad. He was the nerd. He was the nerdy Power Ranger, and then wasn't he a robot at one point? Yes. I recall him being a robot. Why is everyone going to hate on Billy? <laughs> I don't know. I I'm surprised Billy. I know his name. Okay. <laughs> what was his animal? Flash. Yeah, what was his, what, what part of the animal was he? What was his dinosaur? Yeah. Um, I want to say it was a pterodactyl, but I think I'm wrong. Was it, was it like Triceratops? I'm looking. I Triceratops! Some key has, yeah, there <laughs> wow. we go. Some key also said Billy is the Donatello of Power Rangers. <laughs> <laughs> there, we go. there you go. Hang on. Donatello <laughs> is awesome. <laughs> Why does every week it devolves into an argument about who was the best turtle? <laughs> every week. Only on the late, late show. Because he looked so, oh my gosh, I'm looking at the pictures of this actor. Yeah? No. <laughs> no. He does not he... look smart. <laughs> Leave Billy alone. Right. Okay. Trying to figure out what his belt is even holding up. I I mean, I uh, guess he would pants. put his sword in it, but he doesn't have a sheath hanging there for his sword. Pants. It's holding up his pants. It's on the outside. <laughs> also, yes, David Moffat. There's no does. dagger. There's no little pouches of anything. <laughs> it is purely fashion belt. Right. Fashion belt. Nice. <laughs> well, should we um, should we take a look at the remaining minis? I yeah. think we should. Wait. Yep. Yeah, let's Absolutely. do that. Absolutely. Let's take a look at the uh, some more miniatures from the Painting Happy Little Minis Facebook group. Uh, if you're watching and you are not a member, uh, you're welcome to come on over to Facebook, search for Painting Happy Little Minis, and click Join a... Group, and uh, then Leona will admit you into the group. Yeah. Dang. After last week, where Leona like got on my case about admitting people. No. I've left them all for her. Thank you. Well, there were two today that were definitely spam, so that was exciting. <laughs> okay, <laughs> great. 
<laughs> See, I don't want to make that. I don't. I don't want to make that poor decision. Yeah. <laughs> Letting in a spammer. But if uh, you, yeah. Uh, aren't on Facebook, but you'd still like to submit um, a photo. I've recently put together a Google Forms that you can find on our Twitch and YouTube pages, and you can submit a photo there. Very cool. Darth Maul. I almost nerd sniped my fiance to where he was late for work because I asked him a Star Wars continuity question in the morning. Like I woke up, he brought me, he's being all sweet. He like brought me coffee and I like just immediately nerd sniped him. And I was like, can you tell me the Star Wars continuity thing? Nice. Um, but I think this is cool. This is a uh, great. Joshua's taken uh, the Afrit model, which I'm guessing is from uh, WizKids. Yep. Looks like a WizKids mini. Yep. Uh, and it's painted him up with Darth Maul's um, coloration and markings. That's really cool. It is really cool, isn't it? Yeah, it looks great. Nice work there, Josh. Very cool. Oh. Laura has painted up uh, a Reaper a Relief Mini. So I think Reaper did these for the uh, Australian bushfires yeah. uh, at the end of 2019 when I was in Australia. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, this is a very cool looking uh, red kangaroo. Uh, but yeah, it looks great. Particularly liking the, um, the sort of the fade from the, the black nose through the um, sort of grayish fur up to the um, the reddish fur, the orangey yeah. reddish fur. The face looking really cool. But yes. Look how fluffy the ears look on the mm. inside. Fluffy? Those white highlights, yeah. yeah. They look like they have a, like the, right on the out, outer rim of the ears, they just look. Yep, yep. I had um, a neighbor of mine recently ask me if um, kangaroos did actually box. So there's always like the boxing kangaroo idea. Kangaroos are terrifying. Um, can, yeah, kangaroos' arms are actually way too short to land any, any a punch of any significance. But like um, at the end of their to end of their feet, their toes are like like the toenails are like this oh. this long. So if they they can rear back on their tail, like rest the tail and rear back on it, and then like gore you with their legs. Stick them in, ever, pull it down. Ever seen itself. them? Have you ever seen the videos of angry kangaroo, kangaroos, Leona? Yeah. I'm so glad you put Leona at the end there because it'd be like, I don't need to see the videos. <laughs> no, no, you lived it. I lived it. <laughs> yes. Maybe someone asking me if I've ever seen an alligator. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. No, that's uh, it's a fantastic meme I've seen somewhere where. Uh, we said, like, so in Australia, I hear you keep kangaroos as pets. Oh, no, not at all. <laughs> no, you keep cassowaries as pets, right? Yeah. No, no. no we don't keep cassowaries as pets. You don't keep <laughs> kangaroos as pets. Kangaroos are um, a valuable part of society, and they're treated as equals. So. I had, uh, <laughs> Travis had a friend who was stationed in Australia, and they came home one day, and the door was open. Yep. And they're like, that's odd. And um, they were like, okay. And they shut the door and then they walked inside and looked around. And um, there was a cassowary in their house. Right. So promptly the house and the keys were turned over to the cassowary. <laughs> right, yes. <laughs> the guy called everyone like, what do I do? And they're like, um. Leave. Leave the house. Just, <laughs> you know, that's his house now. That's. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry, it's his house now. <laughs> I had to then, I had explained to Travis what a cassowary was at one point, because he was like, aren't they like emus? And I was like, <laughs> Not quite. Not yeah, quite. Devil emus. <laughs> uh, Michael Gonzalez has painted up some Dungeon Saga minis. Uh, so Dungeon Saga from uh, Mantic Games. These are looking very cool. I am particularly... Loving the, which one am I particularly loving, Gretchen? The necromancer, that is correct. <laughs> the necromancer <laughs> that is uh, dragging that skeleton up, puppet like, <laughs> puppet master like, <laughs> up through the. Uh, 
I the like how the skeleton looks like he's smiling. Like he's about it. Oh, he's, he's like, yeah, I'm yeah. back. <laughs> I'm back. Exactly. You you always see like skeletons or the dead being like no, but kind that's of all, or, yeah oh shuffle. But that skeleton, he is, is is he wearing like a scarf or is that just slime, or am I just blind? <laughs> I, think I don't know. But slime. he's there. He's it's fashionable yeah. and he's ready to cause some mischief. <laughs> I like it. He is. No, I think these uh, these look great. Michael, you've done a done a very cool job there. Yeah, I definitely would not like to fight either the, uh, I'm guessing the vampire on the right-hand side or the uh, necromancer. Mm. I would have the uh, have the rogue in the middle on my side. That would be good. <laughs> but yeah, looking cool. Nice work. Ooh. Mike has uh, Mike finished painting these up. Reaper bones. Oh, boy, that... The squiddy... Cthulhu y worm creature down the bottom is just, that's amazing. Just I a, like that ombre down in the uh, tentacle beard there. Yeah, actually, that's, yeah, that's really good. That orange through to the pink. Yeah. Yeah. Very nice work there, Mike. It has, a, it almost has the same, like, vibrancy you'd see in, like, a gummy worm, except the texture is, uh, I, not gummy worm. The not texture worm. is tentacly. Tentacly, uh, yes. Okay. So a little bit slimier. Yeah. No. It definitely like I'd expect almost like if he grabs you, like that hits all like the things in my brain that say that's probably poisonous. Right. No. <laughs> I think that would be. I think it would be. Yeah. There, there's no no colors. Yeah. No, I think you've done a great job here, Mike. It looks uh, it looks really good. And yeah, that that ombre is awesome. Nice work. Mike, it's painted up a frost giant. This is looking very cool. She's a somber looking guy. Yeah. Very. Very definitely. I love the little, um, just a little patch of green in there. Just, uh, it's not all white and blue and brown. But, uh, yeah, just that nice little, nice little hint of pleasantness. When everything else is like, that's going to kill you. <laughs> I don't know why. Well, and I like, it just feels too, like that. Uh, how it kind of hits on that shoulder in the direction that the wind is pushing his beard and his hair. Right. Because it almost makes it seem like the wind is uh, kind of warm. Not cover oh, okay. it, but it, it makes okay. me feel like the breeze is, is warm. The warm breeze. Or Okay. No wonder like, he's looking not, so angry. Like he's interacting <laughs> with the environment yeah. is what it makes me think. That's cool. Um, that's good. I also like the uh, talking of mombres. <laughs> I like the the uh, the horns. Yeah. yeah, it's looking really good. Nice work, Mike. Looks great. Oh, Roger. Hua Mulan, warlord for monumental. Looking very cool. Yeah, it's looking very nice. I love that you've worked um, a lot of uh, the darker, you've got all the darker colors around. Uh, well, basically, you've got the, the light skin for the face and the chest there, and everything else around it kind of frames it and brings it up to that, that area there, I think. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's um, great highlighting and shading in that area, and then as you move further down, it's, there's less highlighting. Um, it's just pushing the focus towards the center there. Yeah, it looks really very dramatic. Dramatic lighting there. Yeah, very cool. Nice work, Roger. That looks great. And and this highlighting across the hair there as well looks cool. The the gold, all those gold points are all sort of cir all circle that center of the face. Yeah, nice work. Looks great. Looking forward to seeing... Um, who did you say you were painting, Roger? What's the next one you're working on? My mind's gone blank. Ramses. Hmm? Ramses? Ah, Ramses. That'll be very cool. Yeah, looking forward to seeing Ramses. Nice one. Oh. 
Ryan is working on, has been oh, painting up some uh, Malifaux wild boars. These are looking very cool. So I think these are from the um, the Bayou, uh, what do you call it, faction, the mm -hmm. Gremlin faction. Um, and I'm pretty sure that in the in that faction you can get some Gremlins riding the boars. But yeah, these look these are looking yeah, very cool. Yeah, I think cool. so. Yeah. I think we've seen someone paint some. Yeah. Yep. I think we have. But uh, no, these are looking very cool. It's a great, uh, great brown you've chosen there. I'm liking the the tusks as well. Yep, just nice like work, Ryan. Just like the actual Looking. wild boar that plague Louisiana and the Bayou. Pardon? So just like the actual wild boar wild that boars. plague. Yeah. Definitely. Oh, Sean uh, has painted up some uh, bright riders, the Lumineth um, Realm Lords bright riders. These are the uh, the pointy elves. For uh, Warhammer Age of Sigma. And yep, these are looking very cool as well. That's a good example of saturation for uh, contrast. Yep. Up at the front where you have those uh, those mounts being super duper saturated. Yep. And yep. then more pastel colors on the uh, on the riders. The rider and the armor and the uh, those manes as well. They kind of uh, you know desaturated look to the compared to the the blue. Very saturated blue, but also um, the spear points, uh, the lan like the lance points, there are also quite saturated. But yep, looking nice, Sean. I've heard that these models are very, very, very detailed, so I've kind of been a little bit worried about trying to paint any of them, just because they'll take a so lot of time. That means we have to time. paint them. Pun. So that means we have to paint them. We have to paint them. Yeah. I don't. Th I, well, we could. <laughs> we paint some of them, but uh, but no, these are looking really nice. Good work, Sean. Last oh, one. Wow. Cool. Steve has painted up a sculpt from Crippled God Foundry. Love that amethyst color on the wing. Fun. The that amethyst kind of. Yep. Gradient. Yeah, it's looking very cool. I think all of those. Um, yeah, that green through to purple. Everything is sort of nice and dark. They, the, obviously, the purple has got some great saturation to it towards the end. But, um, yeah, looking very nice. Um, and I like that the... We talked about framing before. We were talking with um, talking about Roger's miniature. The, I guess the, the arms, the upper arms there for the, the wings as they come down, the, having that black green around um, that face or ha having those they're great places to put that sort of framing obviously the the sculpt done by somebody else those arms are already there but using them to frame the uh, the face like that can really um, get you to focus in on the details there looking good I know not until just then that I noticed that it has a tail it's kind of whipping around the side there. <laughs> right it looks like side. it's ready to strike with those little green highlights on it. Yep. Yeah, it definitely looks cool. Nice looks like work, something Steve. you'd see in a cave. Pardon? So it looks like something you'd see in a cave. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I think with some of that uh, sort of what the glossy... What sound does it make? Oh. Echolocation. Like the sound of a bat. Have you ever heard a bat <laughs> actually <laughs> make a noise? I can't do it. I tried, but it just Thank didn't want to come out. Like, if you actually listen to a bat make that high-pitched noise, it is unnerving. It is. If you would, if that, if something that large would be making that kind of echolocation like, noise, you would hate it. You would be like, ah, this is definitely like awful. Yeah. It's like they're clicking, yeah. It's clicking, but it's, it's like, it, it makes, it's almost like nails on a chalkboard to me. Maybe I'm just, like, highly susceptible to it. I was gonna say, I don't it sounds like it. But I, Are you I bat, girl? bat just yells Marco. <laughs> <laughs> <don't like> <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and the and the and the, anim, uh, the bugs be all back. Oh. Polo. <laughs> <laughs> I eat you now. <laughs> Excellent. Oh. That's great. 
Oh. Yeah, I had to kill a badly wounded pat, uh, bat in the back patio. I, I, I had to save a bat at one point. Uh, opposite, my my dog tried to eat it, and oh, um, I it, it wasn't wounded, but it was out during the day, which is usually a sign of illness. Right. So I swooped it up very carefully because bats are prone to have rabies, um, and I didn't want my dog or any of the school children because it was near a heavily crowded area where kids right. would be coming home from school. Um, so I got some stuff safety for my hands and I, I put it in a little container um, until nighttime where I could just kind of let it go on its way. Um, and <laughs> it was mad and it was making the, the noises and it is it is not a fun sound. It is haunting. Look it up online <laughs> and just listen to... Th- and. Even, like, I feel like even if you look it up online, it's not accurate because the echolocation is, like, sending sounds out at a certain pitch so they can bounce off of things. And that makes almost a feeling in your ear when you hear it. Sure. Um, Horrible. Do not like. Zero out of ten. Alexa, play bat sounds. (laughs) Horrible Yelp review. It makes sense to me, like that you don't like it because you had that experience where they're, where like you had to grab it and then you had to hear it. Yeah, it's Cause like angry. I have bats who fly around. I, my, there's like this random abandoned barn near my house. And so we hear the clicking in the summertime, but because they're just flying, like it doesn't bother your brain. Well, and yeah, right. but they're up. Yeah, like I feel high, like that's yeah, also, exactly. cause like when they're right next to you, it's, and again, maybe I'm just sensitive to the sound. Like maybe. Right. I feel like it's it's very similar like with dolphins. They they hit that same like that same pitch, right. but because theirs is different, it's like a different cadence. It doesn't bother me it's as much. Much more friendly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know, dolphins can be mean. I don't know what you're doing to all of these animals that they are so angry with They're you. They're all mean. They're all <laughs> so horribly mean. Like, I grew up around Baltimore where we had the National Aquarium, and what's the video that they show you before the dolphin show? <laughs> it's the don't touch an animal <laughs> in the wild. Yeah. And this lady, um, like, gets her hand bitten by a dolphin. And you're like, dolphins mm-hmm. are mean. No, it's because I've worked with enough animals. So I'm like, no. <laughs> All and I love animals, but all animals are inherently dangerous. Yeah, that's fair. And I feel like that's a disclaimer that I should. Anytime I talk about weird animal sounds, I'm like, yeah, I want you to hear this weird animal sound, but I don't want you to actually be anywhere near actually this see wild the weird animal. animal. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. Oh, Gretchen, um, did you want to talk a little bit about what you've been painting so far? Yeah, sure, because that's my job here. Um, well, Job putting schmuck. putting brown on his gauntlet um, instead of his hair, but thankfully, just going to wipe that off. So, um, yeah, he is, he is almost done. You can see there he has black pants, brown belt, completely useless belt. I don't know why he has it on there. Um, these pants. His pants are tucked into his armor, um, but well, I really the like the. Uh, I really like how the highlights came out on that shoulder, though. They, even with the like blurredness, you can you can see them really well. Um, so he's he's coming along. I'm not really paying much attention to his face because it's inside his elbows. No one's gonna be looking at it, especially not me. Um, (laughs) uh, but, um, yeah, I really like how his armor came out. I like dry brushing metal. I like painting metal. Um, it's easy, so it's relaxing. Yeah. Um, I would probably, if we had more time, I would probably actually try to make his, neaten up his face a little bit. Um, because the more I look at it, the more it is wrong. But... We don't have time. <laughs> we got plenty of time. We've got 25 minutes. What are you talking about? Oh, gosh. You can do it. <laughs> um, no, what I can probably fix up his face in 20 minutes. Um, 
Yeah. What colors did you end up using for the uh, like for the blue? For the blue, I ended up using the blue I had left out from last time. So I used dark Prussian blue, and then I used sky blue as a highlight, and I just blended that until uh, it was smooth, and you could see all the little wrinkles in his tunic. Um, and then I just filled in the space that was awkwardly there under his armpit to make it no longer as much of a target. Because <laughs> it bothered me, because it's not on this side. It's not on his right side. And I'm like, why? Either I'd have to repaint this side to where it would match, or I just give him proficient armor. Right. Nice. So... <laughs> Um, we gave him proficient armor. Still don't understand his, his need to not have his left shoulder covered, but that's okay. I'll only just judge him slightly for the rest of my life. Maybe it's one of those things where he's trying to fool somebody into thinking that he's other-handed. It's a two-handed sword. Yeah. You're using both of them. I mean... You can, as a left-handed, if you're a left-handed fighter and you're fighting with a long sword, everything you do is mirrored. Yeah. Um, so it does give you an advantage to people who are accustomed to always fighting people who are like dominant handed. Right. Um, so, I mean, that could, that could be a valid. Well, I'm just thinking of that, the, the dueling scene. From Princess Bride. It, but th that's a one-handed sword. Uh, you can do that with a... I, I, I know, but it's just... It's all about deception, right? Why doesn't he have armor on his left, on his left shoulder? I guess Maybe I'll there's something I don't know. Oh, I'm confused now. That's what his opponents would be thinking, right? <laughs> No, I want it. <laughs> yeah. You're stupid. You're I'd fall for it. I'd fall for whatever he's planning. Right. I would be more distracted by the fact that he's not wearing any armor on his, on his thighs, thighs whatsoever. And I'd be like, why? Do you think I'm just going to hit you? Because I don't wear armor on my thighs when I fight. Uh, right. I mean, I don't wear, like, armor. I wear protective wear. But, like, even in my kit, I, I have yoga pants on. And I have, like, a little a little skirt thing that is technically like my thigh armor. Um, my battle skirt. <laughs> um, <laughs> I thought they were called kilts, but anyway, keep going. Uh, I forget what this is actually called, but it's actually based off of a piece of protective where it's unisex. Um, right. It's basically the equivalent of what this guy is wearing right here. This, it has a name. But I have one made out of stab-proof material. Um, and it, it kind of, like, comes down and covers my legs. Uh, however, um, it doesn't, like, even though if someone were to hit on top of that, right. it would, like, protect. It does not protect when someone comes from underneath. All right. Yeah. And just okay. whacks you across the backside you know, uh, your right. the side of your legs, right above your knees. Like, <laughs> and none of those are protected. <laughs> right. Because um, I have had that happen, like, three times by the same person. Right. Um, <laughs> Somebody's getting a little bit cheeky. <laughs> I'm getting a lot cheeky. I had right. bruises. Um, but that was my fault for not blocking. Uh, but, right. yeah, um... It's not as, like, protective as it would seem. So right. either he's a super confident fighter right here, or or he just he's... woke up late for paladin school. <laughs> yeah. Let's go with that. I, I prefer that. I'm pretty sure there's a Disney show about that. Paladin school. There should be, if there Maybe. isn't. Yeah. Okay. So I just, uh, I've gone along and painted the, uh, so I painted the swords black. I didn't want the swords to be sand. I wanted them to be uh, held by this magical being. Uh, so I just um, painted them black. I painted the blades silver for the um, hilt and pommel. 
there. I painted it with uh, hammered copper. Oops, sorry, whereabouts? There we go. Hammered copper, which is a very cool um, orangish coppery color. Surprise, surprise, with a name like hammered copper. And then uh, highlight it with glorious gold. The, uh, the blade was just done with um, the Army Painter gun metal. Which is my favorite, uh, one of my favorite silvers. And so I just wanted to let those dry. So I painted the, uh, the edge there, just tied it up the black. But I wanted to let those dry so that I could come along with some uh, Army Painter purple tone. Um, so I'm going to put this as a wash on the hilt and pommel there and bring it down onto the blade a little bit too, to give it a little bit of a magical feel. <laughs> magical. The blade of the scimitar, so. Yeah, his, his sword is just sword right now. I, I can probably do something real quick to pretty it up, but first yeah. I made his eyebrows less awful. His eyebrows? He, Painting he, eyebrows on? I did, a little teeny. Wow. <laughs> little, little teeny, That's intense. Little teeny eyebrows. He doesn't have, you can't really see, like it creates a shadow, his, his hands up like this create a shadow, so you can't really see much of his face, but, but his cheekbones are highlighted and he has his little eyebrows and you see like the tiniest whiff of a, uh, what may or may not be a mouth. Right. Um, don't look too closely or it gets kind of scary looking. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, um, maybe I don't want to fight this guy. He can just be, he can just be him. He can. Uh, let me see if I can get the light glinting on that sword. There we go. So we can kind of see the, um, the purple that we've got coming in down there. Um, I might have to do a couple of thin coats of it to build that up. But I do like this purple. It's a nice um, dark, sort of leaning towards blue, the blue of purple rather than a reddish purple. That's nice. Which can some, sometimes come out a little bit pink. But I wanted to have a, have a sort of darker purple against the um, the pale sand. Should I give him a mustache? Hmm? So should I give him a mustache? Hide his, uh... No, you're giving him eyebrows? Hide his weird smile. All the facial hair. Give it all, the, all of it there. I mean, I could give him a mustache. So we can see See a little bit, yep, you can see it on the camera. If There's, I um, mess up his mustache, it's your fault. Sure, I'll take it away. <laughs> uh, it look, looks a little bit mottled there, um, so it's not sitting on the, on the paint too as smoothly as I'd like, but that's okay because I'll come back with the um, gun metal to highlight that. You can see there uh, some of the um, wash is pooling. And I'm just going to use my brush to pull that um, away. Pull that excess purple wash off the end there before it dries. If I check over on, oh, now I moved it completely off screen. Actually, I think this the one. mustache hid the fact that his mouth was scary. Okay, that's good. <laughs> um, just going to put a little bit more wash just down there. I gave him a goatee too. Yeah, that's looking pretty, pretty good. Might only need to touch this up a little bit with the, the gun metal, a couple of areas. And then uh, once that's dry, I can come back with um, some of the army painter shining silver to get some edge highlights on that, make that look nice and sharp. What I'm doing um, here now is rather than just using the, the straight gun metal, I'm mixing a little bit of the, the purple wash into it. So that um, my gradient there is a little bit um, smoother. Okay. 
There we go. And we'll do the same over on this side. Now, can anybody tell me why I'm using purple on this gold? And this sand yellow? Well, I know the answer, but I think you're <laughs> the chat. The chat know as well. They've listened to me back on about it for ages. But uh, yeah, oh, uh, the reason, of course, is that uh, purple is a great contrasting color for yellow. I could have put blue or I could have put green on there, but purple is going to give the, the best um, contrast. So it works really well on the gold and against uh, sitting next to that yellow of the, the sand. Uh, some chaos. When applying a wash, does it matter if you paint from the top or bottom? I don't get it. Some key. Where was the? There was no pun in there. No serious question. Um, it doesn't. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Uh, the important thing, I, I think, um, you probably probably want to start at the top and work down, because um, if you start at the bottom and work up, you'll get more. You sh you'll probably end up with more pooling. So just the, the same way as like when you're painting a, a, the wall of a house, like the interior wall or something like that, you start, start at the top because the paint is going to drip down. And so as you work your way down, you can flatten that, those paint drips out. Um, Whoops, I did not do that. Eh. I'm, not, I'm not saying it happens all the time, but if you do have any paint drips, it's going to be easier yeah. to get rid of them that way. Uh, I think the important thing with washes is um, just to I'll sort of put him in the middle here is I certainly see some areas here where um, I sort of accentuated but there's, there will be some places where the wash will pull and that's what you want to keep an eye on um, if you're finding that your washes are doing uh, pooling and creating um, sort of very dark areas all the time uh, like abnormally dark uh, you probably want to add a little bit of um, mixing medium to them uh, so that you can break that surface tension and they'll sort of flatten a little bit more. Um, but always be ready to sort of wick away. So if you take a, a dry brush, not, not a dry brush, which you use for dry brushing, but a brush that is dry, uh, you can use that to sort of wick away some of the um, excess wash. So that's really the important thing to think about. <laughs> Somebody says, I have real questions sometimes. <laughs> no, that's good. It's important to have them. But uh, yeah, I don't think there's, because generally on a miniature, you won't be throwing a wash over an entire, usually won't be doing it over an entire model like we've done today. Um, but just always be watching for that pooling. So, yeah along pretty well. I'm going to throw some of that uh, shining silver on the um, palette. Oh, a little bit too much there, but hey-ho. I always find that when I'm working at home on my wet palette, I might end up using like 20 or 30 colors and they'll all be little blobs. But because I'm working so fast here, it's always shake it up, open it up, blah and spill huge blobs of paint all over my palette. But that's fine. It's okay. So yeah, I'm getting some of this uh, on the edge there. And rather than um, trying to paint along this edge here uh, with the point of the brush, I've got paint on the ed on the sides of it. So I'm just gonna run that, that edge along it. So I don't know if you can see that on the camera. Uh, so yeah, just running that along the edge to catch catch the edge there, and I can do that on this edge here. And it starts to get that um, a brighter look. Now on that the edge of the blade there, there's two ways I can go. I can either run a nice a thin line down there and hope that I don't splash up onto the 
the flat of the blade. Is that what they what do they call it? The yeah, the flat. flat. Yeah. And then the the sharp the bit edge. would be the edge. Yeah. Okay, cool. I was gonna say, is it like bevel or something like that? But uh, it's just I don't know. Edge. I've been hit with the flat enough times and we always just call it the flat. The flat. <laughs> cool. Um, well the other thing you can do, I'm gonna try and find a better spot here. Where that is um, You can run along and just give it little, little tiny brush strokes like that. Which uh, can give you the look of a, a blade, sort of the, the whetstone sort of sharpened it across in that direction so you get little tiny lines. They're things that in real life you probably wouldn't see, so the idea that when you shrink it down to like one fiftieth the size that you could see them is kind of ridiculous, but it's all about just accentuating something. Can I was gonna say if you look close up, you can usually see some kind of uh, something. Some kind of striations. Yeah, not not yeah. anything like crazy because if you have giant chips taken out, right? Then like obviously there's something wrong with your sword. Yeah. Or. It should probably stop using it. Probably. That doesn't really stop people. But, you know. <laughs> um. Okay. One of the things on uh, both of these uh, scimitars, there are a couple of um, lines. Let me see if I can get them. There we go. A couple of very, very thin lines there that suggest uh, sort of battle damage. So I am going to just quickly give those a little highlight of the shining silver. So where that the texture is cut into the um, the blade there, I'm just going to pick the one on the bottom to highlight over here. The same thing. And what I can do now is mix a little bit of just a tiny bit of that charred brown in with some of the um, purple purple tone. There we go. Just mix those together a little bit. I could just use straight purple tone, but it. Um, doesn't have a lot of body there, so I wouldn't get the um, immediate contrast that I'm looking for. But by adding in charred brown, which has a little bit of a purple tone to it anyway, I can uh, kind of accentuate that. So, and I can paint this into those little scratches, those marks. Just do it very carefully. You see, I've got everything braced. My the model is braced against my hand, my hand is braced against that, against the model, or just so I can paint nice, careful, smooth. Yeah. One of the one cool thing that you can do is let's say you've got a big sword like this and it doesn't have any of these pre pre cast um, scratches in there but you want to have it look kind of beaten up because you can actually just paint these on yourself so by painting those two lines the line that represents the sort of the shadow area and the line that represents that the sharp highlight um, yeah you can make it look like it's damaged and has a, like a three-dimensional gouge cut out of it so yeah there we go and then the final thing I'm Thing I'm going to do is uh, so I put the purple wash over the um, hammer copper highlighted with the gold, which has really toned that gold back down. So I'm going to pick a couple of spots on it where I can highlight the the gold again. Just really help those um, bits on the hilt stand out. A little gold that runs up the blade. 
just by picking out these little highlights, I can really accentuate the, the depth, get that contrast. So I've got that on there. Got the help there. And I can leave some of the, the purple shading in there as well. And then finally, mix in a little bit of the, um, the shining silver to the glorious gold to get a very bright light gold. Do the final highlights with that. Just to give sort of maximum contrast. Maximum contrast. That is the way to go. Where is he looking? There we go. I'm trying to spot where my camera is. I never know. It's always in the same place. He's a sandy every guy. Week. <laughs> Pardon? He's a sandy guy. He is sandy. Can't quite Instead see the texture here. Right, right. Yep. I think um, in in some photos, we'll take, we'll take some photos and pop them up in the group. Um, you better see more of that sand texture. But yes. There we go. He is done and looking dangerous. I think. Yep. We have about three minutes left. Three minutes left. I'll awesome. I can go home early. <laughs> I have finished Miss Leona. What do I do now? Oh. <laughs> music background? Country? I've thought about trying to get a music background. If people would like that, just tell me. And then I'll try. It's oh, just music a little bit difficult the way that we do it. Right. <laughs> Since we don't stream directly like to Twitch or something. All uh, right. It makes it a little bit more... Like, I would have to put together a playlist, which is not bad, but. I'm going to see if we can get that. Just, Just have Dave have <laughs> freestyle. freestyle during the stream. <laughs> <free. laughs> uh, no. <laughs> no. Definitely very good. <laughs> All right, let me see if I can kind of tone this down. That would be good. I couldn't do that. Oh, there we go. I can move in closer. Oh. Look at that. A oh, bit the, yeah, that's it. That's it. Yeah, that's good. So we can start to see some of the texture in there. So, yeah, I think either um, the big wall of sand from the mummy or... Um, is it Sandman? Yeah. Is that uh, the character from... From Guardians? Hmm? From Guardians? Just like no. the Sandman in general? Well, I guess the Sandman in general, but like yeah, Sand Mr. From, Sandman. Yeah, Guardians. No, I was thinking um, from um, Spider Man. Spider Man oh, 2. Oh, that guy. Yeah. Yeah, actually, that would be pretty cool. A little bit more like that. He does, yeah. Some key got it. Whoops. Right. Spider Man, Sandman. Yep. That <laughs> 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 I mean, it looks like he's going to bring you a dream. A nightmare. And, and that dream is death by scimitar. <laughs> All right. Yeah. I think um, one thing that would be cool to do, or that, that might have been cool to do before I started, was um, to enhance that, uh, the sand kind of feel, uh, would be to, obviously, some sand around the base, but also different patches of sand on it, uh, on the model. And also, I think if you were, if it were to get... Um, some like strands of cotton uh, so to accentuate that that movement I could get strands of cotton and sort of hang them from certain areas connect them to something else so they sort of hang in a, a loop and then cover them in sand I think That'd that would cool. really really push that um, idea alright yeah. he's standing it's going to look like he's standing in mud because mud. his the ground is wet around him but <laughs> He is completely painted. Okay. <laughs> Yoink. And has a face. Awesome. And a mustache. And a goatee. Cool. Oh no. <laughs> I have to zoom in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. 
I can do that. Yep. I have to move him down. Move him down. Move him down. Ah. I'll get there. How's that? See that that that's shoulder popping. That. <laughs> yep. That looks cool. Yeah, I think it does look good with the. Um, yeah, well, those, well, that's what the belt's holding up. It's holding up those, um, it has those upper thigh plates. Kind of. These ones, um, these ones just here. Yeah, like I said, it's like a little battle skirt. It's Fun? A little battle skirt? <laughs> yeah, it's like my little battle skirt. <laughs> yeah. But no, that looks cool. I can see his mustache. Very nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Good work. I like so, the light shining down on him. It makes him look very heroic. <laughs> <laughs> yep. This is a paladin I would like to have in my corner. He's just he's putting all of it in that in that coming down like oh, yeah. that. Let me know uh well, you wanna hope that the, the uh, whatever he's hitting won't dodge it. Yeah. <laughs> Because he's put all of his, all his energy into that, that one that is strike. Going. He's maybe, not moving anywhere. Maybe he's attacking a mimic. Eh. There you go, a chest. So the chest is, it's not going to walk anywhere. That's what he's doing. He pokes. That's why he's putting all his effort into it. But yeah, nice work. Hooray! Woohoo! Another late, late show down. Down. Two down, 7,000 to go. <laughs> Maybe not that many. <laughs> Dread, <laughs> Dread, Pied, Paladin Dread Paladin Roberts. I should have, I should have made it all black. Really, you come in with that beautiful <laughs> idea after right I've the painted end. the whole thing. <laughs> well, you don't even have to repaint the arm there, really. Yeah. But it'll be fine. You could do it. But uh, oh. no. <laughs> nice nice suggestion, Sean. Mm -mm. It was great. Mm -mm. No? Okay. <laughs> All good. Uh, okay, so yeah, here we are at the end of another. Another Penny episode Happy Little Minis. Of painting Happy late Little show. Minis late, late show. Yeah. With Gretchen, yeah. Dave, and Leona. <laughs> you didn't do the jingle, but that's okay. You'll get there. I will eventually. One day it'll happen. I believe in you. I'll bring in a ukulele next week, and we'll play the jingle. <laughs> I cannot play the ukulele, by the way. Um, please remind Dave next week when he does not have a ukulele that he promised. <laughs> and he's breaking that promise. And our hearts. Yeah, that's okay. Um, thank everyone for joining us. Thanks for joining us uh, to this new time. Especially since I know we had some people last time who were watching from... Um, Places, think? yeah, places where it was very early in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> it was the middle of the night. Middle of the night, early in the morning. Mm. All over the place. Great work, people. We appreciate it. Thank yep. you very much. Make sure to post your minis on the Facebook page, or there should be a new Google Forms photo submission. Yep. Yes. So on, on Twitch and YouTube. So yep. if you watch and from those. there, that's where you submit the minis. Submit yes. the minis so we can talk about the minis. Otherwise, it's going to get very boring. I'll have to tell more weird stories, and Dave will have to make fun of me. Uh, we can't cover <laughs> swords, sharks, or bats next week. <laughs> more whale facts! <laughs> I'll be prepared. Excellent. Okay. Oh, and Jeff. Just saw Jeff. Hey, Jeff. Uh, Jeff says love this time. Fantastic. Good. Everyone's tired and slap happy and having a good afternoon, night. All evening, All whatever day. time it is, <laughs> <laughs> the time that it is now. Um, Excellent. Okay. But yeah. Do we know what we're painting next week? I don't think so. It'll be a surprise. <laughs> It'll be good though. It will be. Um, but yeah. So that ends it. I'm Gretchen. I'm Dave. And we'll see you at your friendly local game store.